Uh, so we have Alex Van Voxel. Uh, he's a, uh, I think, principal architect at Colibra. Uh, he's also a committer for Apache Beam. He'll be talking about how he uh, is using open telemetry collector library from Go. Yeah. Take it away. Hello, so welcome. So um, as I said, I'm Alex. Um, I work at Colibra. Um, we do the data governance. So I'm uh, specifically one of the architects for like infrastructure uh, engineering and SRE and so on. So that's why I'm always talking about open telemetry. Just to give some context, what is open telemetry for people that don't know uh, what it is? It's kind of in the name. Um, I find it kind of an industry changing standard. Um, it's a unique pro project. It's not unique anymore because it's been there for, for a few years now, but when it started just before 2020, First time two open source projects kind of merged, open sensors and open telemetry. Uh, first it started with tracing, but now it has the full stack of all the telemetry uh, signals. I find it a great product that people just come together and make something industry-wide. So it uh, has lots of traction and it's uh, pretty cool. So we were early adapters, so we adapted in 2020. Traces was the only one that was available by then. It's kind of a gamble, but due to that merger and that industry backup, I was very confident um, that we would get where we are now. So um, what are the signals uh, that we're talking about? Uh, so I already mentioned uh, traces, where they started with. Metrics is, of course, also an obvious one, uh, and, and locks as well. So um, they actually standardized uh, all those things. Uh, it's, a it's a standard specification. That means they sell, say, hey, that's how, how things are going over the wire. Um, they have like lots of semantic conventions, which is pretty Im important because it's just like, what is a machine? What is an HTTP call? It's always kind of a combination of different of attributes. Those are also written well uh, written down in the specifications. They are extendable as well, so you could just make your own attributes, what we are of course doing, because each and every company has their own kind of convention, so we just built on top of it. But if, if it's described in the semantic conventions, we just pick them. So it's kind of a continuation of uh, the talk from last year a bit. So I talked like last year on our telemetry backbone that we're using. Um, I'm going very quickly over that. Um, so I'm not going to go into really details, but like one of the important things why we created the backbone on open telemetry is like vendor independence. Uh, so we didn't want to have like any vendor uh, agents anywhere in our kind of our systems because we have thousands and thousands and thousands of VMs and, and dozens of Kubernetes clusters. If we want to try out another vendor where we end up our, our data, we don't want to change all our agents. We just want to send them open telemetry signals. That was an important thing. There are still vendors there that want to say, hey, we have our own agents, and we say, we are not interested. Go away. Um, another one is um, owning our data for us. It's pretty important that you own our data because if you're just collecting data and just put it to a vendor, you're not owning it anymore. Because if you want to do interesting analytics on that data, you actually have to get it back from the vendor. So that's not owning the data. It's better to just think about your data. It's your own. Um, the telemetry kind of vendors or observability vendors, they are one of your consumers of your data and they should bring interesting visualizations or either analytics from what they provide. But you still want to do your own stuff. Um, a kind of a learning skill that's growing up in our process is that we clearly are starting to have like two different patterns. Because if you start out, you're kind of learning everything. We have like pure, when we now categorize things in operational use cases and analytical use cases, operational use cases. In the beginning, we kind of did everything in between with Beam. We're now starting to move some stuff to the collector. I'll come in back to the collector as, as it's uh, back uh, later. And why as well. So um, 
So one of those use cases, for example, was we had in, in Beam trace sampling. We did sampling on that data. We had side inputs that read like uh, operations wanted to have like on that customers more data and it read it in as side inputs. It was kind of a pain while it was way more easier to move that to the collector. So, so that's why we are actually splitting, uh, splitting it up and pushing more operational use cases to the collector, while analytical use cases we're really putting into to beam, like what is bring business value out of your data, and that's kind of in the category of owning your own data. Um, a bit on those signals, so like I said, like operational use cases, that's kind of um, um, to the collector, but like for, for, for analytical ones, because we have three signals, from all those signals, what are the most interesting ones to do analytical work? Um, let's start with metrics. First of all, this is kind of the lowest value. You would say like, hey, metrics, that sounds like interesting, but from a processing point of view, it is actually the lowest one because most metrics are already pre-aggregated um, because you have like in your code some co counters, the only thing you have is a counter, but like, uh, or like an average or something. That's what, an, uh, that's what, what a metric is. So if you don't want to kind of collect or do other kind of business processing, it's like dividing by something, dividing and dividing. By the way, you have like the, 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 the value of your data well, is uh, there's like a lot of errors out of it um, uh, in, into that value, but like um, I do like it as an output, but uh, and that eventually ends up in a dashboard or something. But like as an input, it's kind of the lowest one. The next one is traces. Uh, I always like uh, it is kind of an interesting use case, but I also like to tell the story about my. A thousand dollar a day mistake. Um, while we we had a very business um, business interesting use case to extract value out of the data, but but traces that are so much traces, people do not realize how much trace data that there is. If you want to process it all, it's like very expensive. I want to actually turn out the data flow. Uh, turn out the data flow because, like in these economics. Well, people need to kind of uh, save money, but I cannot because there's like business value of it. So, but still, it has. Uh, it's an interesting one as a, as as input. Uh, but my favorite one is still logs, and it should be kind of obvious that logs are the biggest telemetry, um, uh, the, the highest value because if you look at all the big data processing tools that or from the classic, classical time, like Hadoop or so, most of the use cases that are, are there are for log processing. So, um, so logs in our telemetry data is still, still our, our highest value. But if you uh, really want to go a bit further, just don't do dumb line logging and just process them and do regular expressions on them. Those are kind of lots of the classical approaches. Just try to do some governance around it. Make sure that you have structured logs. Of course, the governance is kind of because that's kind of the company we're we're in. Uh, for it's kind of important, but like there's like lots of value in doing governance on your logs. So actually, do an API. I like to call it do an API uh, first approach on your logs because logs is one of those parts in your code. So everybody's saying API first, API first for everything, but not for logs. So just just say here's a schema, just go for it and say to the developers, that's how you develop it. So you will get like lots of high value. It's like people find it hard to understand, but you get like lots of the, uh, return of value of those things. So now, collector, the collector or or Beam. So, um, first of all, like last year, I said like uh, we're gonna go for Go because it's an inter interesting use case. 
developers in the infrastructure engineering space or SRE space, they do understand uh, Go. Uh, till now, we had like every day pipeline was written in, Beam pipeline was written in Java. There's only kind of one engineer in my team that actually, aside from me, actually can do those <laughs> beam, <laughs> beam pipelines. Lots of people can read the code, but just uh, don't, uh, don't want to invest the time to learn the Java to, to write uh, uh, beam pipelines. But they are no go, so if we could kind of move that a bit to, uh, to the go, it would be very helpful for, for them to do, to do. But I actually thought like the collector itself is also, the, the, so the open telemetry collector is one of those parts of the of open telemetry. Collector is a component, a Go collector that has lots of inputs, lots of outputs, and lots of processors that you can actually pipe together. And that sounds a lot like Beam. It doesn't have like any windowing functionality. It has a state timers or whatever like that. It's very simple. Uh, receive, process, transform, and go back, but not the complex analytical use cases. So that is still like a lot of, lot of general use cases. But, um, uh, but those components can be used in analytical, analytical pipelines as well, like, like a filter or something like that. So I was thinking is like, um, oh, by the way, yeah, that's our kind of our backbone that we have, like lots of those are the collectors that I was talking about with receivers, processors, exporters that go to another one, goes to another one, a Kubernetes cluster goes to pops up, beam processing going out. But we're actually, we're not going to change that out because it has like lots of high value, but we want maybe to do a bit less beam, add some of the operational use cases here, um, but with shared components because uh, if people start here, we can choose to not only um, have values like write transform, uh, tr uh, write it here, and push it actually to the edges. What's impossible to do in 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 Beam because Beam writes on like TensorFlow or Flink or Spark. You cannot push that to uh, the edges. While if we have shared code in those collectors and in Beam, we can push some of those things to the edges. So that's that's kind of a, a, a bit the goal. Already said that. So Go is kind of the common language within infrastructure. Not in every company. Uh, there are lots of people with Python. So you could actually, if you have like lots of people in Python, you could use the Python SDK. But like we do Go. So I was thinking like, is it actually possible to have those those processors uh, run? Um, uh, run in, uh, run in uh, on Beam Go. Um, just kind of uh, the collector. What does it have? Like receivers. Could be something that receives host metrics from a host Kubernetes metrics, or has input from your I, uh, from your application that sends uh, metrics out. Goes goes to a receiver. Processor can be a processor on on metrics, traces, or logs, one or more, more of them. The exporters, that exports data to um, Prometheus, um, uh, data, uh, Google's um, uh, operations center, stack driver, or, or whatever, or, or AWS, it doesn't matter. Um, but you also have like now connectors, they are, they are behind feature flags, but it changes one signal to another. So for example, you could have like traces and it makes like a trace or a log out of it, depending on the use case per use case. Um, what I've kind of noticed is, well, my question was then, should I just be able to have that processor it's being wrapped by a DoFM? And it turned out, um, pretty easy, so I started writing Go code. Um, by the way, kind of apologies, I don't have uh, lots of uh, Go examples. Why? Because my computer broke down and most of the slides I made over my iPad, so that was kind of <laughs> a very interesting experience. 
but uh, it worked, but like code, code samples I don't have. Um, so I was thinking like, can I do that? Can I wrap it in a DoFN? And it actually turned out pretty easy. So we, the, the collectors, as, SDK, the collector, open telemetric collector SDK is pretty nicely done. So you have a processor with a factory, we just wrapped that in kind of the setup and it actually worked. So run, even running on data flow and, and that worked. So and then thought is like what lots of people already in this conference do, let's make an abstraction. Well, no, not make an abstraction uh, on top of it. I actually wanted to use the same open telemetry collector pipeline configuration and just transform it into a beam pipeline. It was pretty easy. It's YAML. Everybody does it. The, the YAML uh, now. You just take that. This is one of the processors. I just read that. Create dynamically a DoFN with the attribute processor with that name. And voila. And then there's way more in that configuration, right? Because you have like those receivers, exporters, and so on. And that also kind of works. Um, I do see other companies here do it, saying, yeah, we want to make the ease of, of uh, adoption of Beam easy. So kind of expose familiar tools. But I didn't want to create something new. I wanted to, they're already making pipelines, just like take the things that they already have and actually transform it into a beam pipeline. And surprise, surprise, it kind of works. Um, also because it's like, because if the, f the first step works, wrapping with do FN, this one works as well. Um, tricky thing though, you have the receivers, processors, exporters and so on. It only works with processors. While because there are a lot of those um, those receivers or exporters doesn't make sense. You you if you have like a Kubernetes uh, receiver, that's no use. Beam does run on whatever you do, don't know. It, it doesn't have access to those things. It doesn't make sense. So what we do is like if we see that that's one of the required input, I, I, I give an error. But what does make sense is like uh, a receiver for pops up, um, pops up I input and an exporter for pops up. So I do actually have their native implementation that uses just the beam, beam IOs. So uh, you cannot not have all, all things of those pipelines. But if you have like pipelines where components doesn't make sense, that means that it doesn't make sense to run it on beam either. So so if you have, you have to look, do you have pops up? Yes, we have pops up. Um, do you use something else? Then you just have to kind of have a native implementation on top of the Beam IO. And, um, and then, it, then it works. Uh, cannot give you the screenshot of, <laughs> of data flow with where it works. Uh, again, broken computer. <clears throat> Um, so so that, that's kind of proven out. Uh, the next interesting kind of op, um, exploration is the open telemetry transformation language. It feel a li uh, really feels like like something like the SQL transform, but specifically for open telemetry. Uh, I have an example here. So it's of course everything is YAML. Uh, that's also the, the, the language of infrastructure. Uh, it does kind of say what is context logs and it does a few few things. So, uh, and those functions could be kind of written independently from the from kind of open telemetry language processor. So, an interesting exploration that hasn't started, but it's kind of a thought experiment is could we good we, we could already use that transform because it's just a processor, yeah, so it would work out of the box, but is there any value to actually, instead of like having one do FN that does this, for each and every component make kind of a do FN? Like if you do like the SQL transform, if you do like a, a, a block of SQL, it makes it lots of do kind of do FNs, right? Because that's what you, you want to do, kind of make small blocks and see, see if it works. 
Um, this is kind of a thought experiment. I haven't started that yet. I'm not sure if it would uh, turn, uh, turn out uh, to be something. Um, if that turns out, it could be interesting to actually extend that open telemetry, open telemetry transformer language with some Windows, uh, Windows state and timers kind of support. I uh, don't know how we would do that, but like the, the Windows support, if you look at uh, SQL transform, it has specifically like in sliding window and so on and so on. So uh, that's kind of an interesting uh, thought experiment. So that's 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 reusing existing components, wrapping and discovering uh, to to go full analytics because most of the things are still Java. Um, you really, I think you, I'm pretty sure you really make sure to hook into the, the the SQL transform because like analytics language, a lot of people know know SQL. Uh, it's 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 an interesting thing, but like. We then make sure that we t plug it into, like here's the pipeline, we transform it, and then the next steps is like doing the, the SQL transform. Again, uh, a thought experiment. So conclusions, quickly. So last year's slide, copy paste. I said this as engineers in the start investigating Go, Go SDK. Um, two years, no, that was last year. <laughs> I know, but, uh, okay. Um, and pop, pop, pop. So that was the last year's slides. Kind of a new conclusion is like uh, the, the some of the teams are already focusing on getting stuff into the, co uh, the collector. Um, and Beam Go, we're not in Beam Go, not yet, kind of. And so it's still in the thought experiments, like those experiments are still ongoing. But I, I, I will I do see value have like using the the collector first, having that as a mindset then and then go for the analytical use cases. Let's see, we need scale and certainly batch processing. Uh, an easy one to think about is if you want to if you can, if you think batch, you can we everything is streaming, but if there are some things like replay or something, that means there's probably an analytical component to it. Then Beam Go would be kind of the, the the way to go, and that's thank you. Just a bit over time. Questions. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>